Hey guys, it's Judy from Nutrition with Judy. Today I'm very excited. We have back Carnivore Doctor with us. So what are some, you know, as you're coaching more people publicly now, I know you coach it for 10 years in general, but um, what are some of the like most common carnivore questions you get? Um, most of them are pretty much sort of different things I've brought up already, but I'll, I'll, I'll tell you that a lot of them are, what am I doing right? What am I doing wrong? Mm -hmm. How many grams of protein? Am I eating too much fat? Um, you know, there, there, there are all these, these questions that are, and, and, and I go back to, all right, well, when you say, what am I doing wrong? Okay. Again, how long have you been strict carnivore? And they said, well, you know, a, a month, but I still have monk fruit in my coffee and I still chew gum. And every once in a while I will give in and have some chips. And I'm like, all right, well, we have to change your relationship with food first before we can expect any results yeah. and, and move forward with your health because you have to realize that this truly is an addiction. And I, I just really think that's one of the main key points that people don't really um, under, truly understand that it, it is an addiction. And it, it, just the fact that you go back to the French fries or go back to the chips, like, well, why are you doing that? You're, you're, you have a drive and, and the sweets. And I was like, well, I, yeah, I still do chocolate. Is chocolate bad? It's 90%, you know, dark. It's like, well, yeah, you, it's, it's, it's just feeding. It's like telling an alcoholic, well, you can have half of a shot once a week. Okay. And that's it. And it just keeps feeding it. And, um, people, people just are that the next most common question is how do I stop, um, cheating and sabotaging myself? That's such a common question. I, said, I, I well, get that too. And, and you know what? One of my favorite things to do, I said, well, all right. So when we get off of this coaching session, you're going to go into YouTube and you're going to type into the search box, Nutrition with Judy and Joan uh -huh. Island, and you're going to watch the food addiction part one and part two. And I want you to watch them both twice. And then you're going to go over to Dr. Robert Sivas, mm -hmm. he's carb addiction doc. And you are going to start binging on those videos and really get a full understanding about mirror neurons in our brain and the socialization of the addiction and the fact that it's, it, it's such a hard addiction to get over because all these other addictions like drugs and cigarettes and alcohol, you can separate yourself from them and they're out of your life. But when you're in, when you're talking about food, especially if you're in your family situation where your kids or your spouse is still, you know, eating junk or you're out with friends and, you know, the table is full of, you know, appetizers of, you know, guacamole and, mm -hmm. and homemade, you know, tortilla chips that everybody's raving. It's the best they've ever had. I mean, these are all situations where you're thrown into and put in front of your drug and it's wafted in front of your nose and you're expected to abstain if you want to, you know, keep yourself in, in a, <laughs> in a healing, um, in a healing way and not get on that horrible roller coaster again. But people have to understand that it, it, and, and again, this is my opinion, and this is from a lot of years of experience, but um, with people, there's, there's a whole, you know, fulcrum of, or spectrum of, um, of, of how strongly our, our draw is to this, but um, I, I just feel like there is no moderation. You can't, you know, just have, you know, a couple chips uh, a couple times a week and expect that that's going to satisfy you and that's not going to throw you right down the slippery slope into the, the horrible black hole you are in and the reason why you're here trying to get out of it. So um, that is one thing I am, I gotta say, if there's anything I'm dogmatic about, it is um, the discussion of that sugar truly is a drug and it's one of the most difficult drugs to get out of your life. And that in my opinion, and it is a dogmatic opinion about sugar, is that you cannot have any of it in your mm -hmm. life because there's, there's no getting out of that, that, that black hole unless it's, it's gone. Clinically, it's shown that 
you know, rats are, and I know people will say, well, those are rodents, they're not humans, but I mean, it just lights up, our brains light up the same areas that light up when we do cocaine or any other addictive drug. And, you know, the thing is, you don't even need to cite those studies, right? The fact that we are stressed and we know that diabetes is the number one, like, comorbid, you know, factor when people are dying from COVID. Um, people are still reaching sugar when this whole virus is about, you know, being um, poor immune, immune response. And yet people are still eating sugar when they know as a fact that sugar debilitates your immune system as soon as you basically eat the sugar. Yeah. And, and yep, we still yeah. grab it. Right. Yeah. And it's, it's still that go-to comfort. I don't want to say it's comfort food like macaroni and cheeses or, or pasta, but there, there it's, it's comfort food. It is, you know, there, there's a rush, whether you're going into the cabinet to, you know, get a, you know, a sugary treat, ice cream, or it's, it's chips, it's, it's processed food, sugar and carbs. It's, um, it, it definitely has this euphoric thought process when you're, when you're turning your brain on to saying, Oh, I'm going to just sit in front of the TV and have some of this. It, it is, is all part of the addiction and, yes. um, it, it's so difficult, but I, I, I tell people if you really really are are motivated to heal yourself of this you you have to make the effort and there's such amazing wonderful videos on youtube even just go into the science of it and listen to um uh, type into the youtube search box uh dr robert lustwig i mean oh, he yeah. done all that that i mean and he was he did this years ago about how toxic literally toxic sugar is and the explanation of why and, and start really, uh, let's, I, I just, my favorite thing to say is just start binging on that. And, and then your, your, your brain is going to start realizing when you start educating yourself and start understanding a little bit more about why it's addictive and, um, and, and how toxic it is. I think that's the, that's one of the crucial starting points other than just telling yourself, I can't have it anymore. And now I'm just denying myself that. And woe is me. I'm going to feel sorry for myself sitting there at this restaurant with three other couples and everybody's ordering their, you know, hot brownie a la mode and their, you know, creme brulee. And I'm going to sit there. No, you're not going to sit there and feel sorry for yourself because you're going to understand why you're not eating it and why you don't want to eat it any longer. And that's got to be the, to, to me, um, the, the crucial point where, you, you, you really get an understanding of it so that you're educated and aside from your desire to want to get over the sugar addiction because of either obesity and health issues, um, you really understand the, the reasoning behind it and empower yourself to have the ability to actually do it. Yes, that's good. I think you need to have that why. One of the common questions I get with this um, topic is, well, how do you fight a crave, um, you know, when you're struggling, let's say like when you, I guess it's harder when you're physically craving it, but you know, when you fall off and then you kind of get back on and then you're trying really hard not to eat these foods, kind of how, what, what are your recommendations to just muscle through it and eat the meat? Um, what has been your kind of advice? Yeah. Um, there, there's all sorts of different tricks that depending on your stage of carnivore and where you're at, like, are you still in keto adaptation where you're in the first three to four weeks or first four to six months? Um, and you know, I, I just say cook extra grill extra and have it right in the fridge, ready to grab you. You're cooking a pound of bacon, cook two pounds and have, you know, some cooked bacon in a foil and you can either just give it a quick heat in the microwave or eat it cold. Um, if you love kielbasa, have some extra grilled kielbasa. Uh, if you're going to grill chicken thighs, grill a whole family pack and have that right there easy to grab. So when you're thinking, God, I'd really want to have some, uh, you know, a Reese's peanut butter cup, because you know, one Reese's is going to lead to three and then your brain is going to be saying, well, I might as well have all five that are there so I can start again tomorrow and not have them anything there to tempt me. You know, it, it's just an ongoing battle. So um, I think that that's one thing is because 
if, if it's, if it's something where you're, you're, you're desiring to eat and you're making a wrong choice, you got to have the right choice at the ready. Um, so that's one. Number two, um, Dr. Sybus talks about having this bridge, which is your alternative to um, how you reacted to things. So, you know, if you're, if you're upset, angry, instead of, you know, heading into the kitchen, put your jacket on and go out for a walk, put your uh, earbuds in and listen to a podcast, go on to low carb MD or go on to any of these amazing podcasts that are out there and just start listening and reinforcing why you're doing this. And, and you know what, you 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 have the choice. Everybody has the choice. And it's the, the, the really the bottom line is you're, you're, you're trying to figure out how you can continue to make the right choice and start stop sabotaging yourself to keep going back to the same, what I call the roller coaster. Yeah, those are really good tips. Um, when I was in my eating disorder facility, they talked about, so they use dialectical behavior therapy or cognitive behavior therapy to basically change our habits. And so one thing they talked about was, it's kind of like you using that bridge that you're talking about. Um, they call it like riding the bit, uh, riding the like, crave wave um so i think that they said scientifically i think it's like seven minutes 10 minutes maybe it's 15 minutes i forget but there's a period where they're like try to ride that wave and then the 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 desires will lessen and then if it doesn't and you still feel that level of intensity of having to eat a carb for example well in their mood it was for the binge but um then they would want you to kind of like sit and be very mindful of everything you're doing. So let's say someone decides to eat carbs, right? They're like, forget it. I can't, this, um, this, this, um, this desire, this craving is so strong. It's so intense. I have to numb it by basically eating carbs. Then I would suggest maybe fine. If you want to do that, then be very mindful in what you're doing. So then slowly open the wrapper, whatever it is, eat the food, taste it. And what is all going in your mind? Is it this rush of, well, it's just relieving my anxiety, then maybe we need to go back and figure out what caused that anxiety, right? Like, and just basically mentally walk through everything you're doing, so that you're very aware of what you're doing, why you're doing it. And so that maybe the next time you know that if you feel that panic of, oh my gosh, I need to grab carbs. Now you know that it's probably something else that triggered it. And those are like some of the steps that I've learned. And I find that to be helpful, but you need to put these in practice because it's a lot of work to do it, right? It's just easier yeah. to go. It's just the carbs. I just want carbs and I don't care, right? But um, yeah, there's, there's, and there's some great apps that you can put on your phone. Um, there's one called, I think it's Insight Timer, which oh, is yeah. guided, guided meditations. Mm -hmm. And um, they're, they're, they're amazing. You can just go into, the, click on guided and you can do a five minute, 10 minute, 20 minute, 30 minute. And pick one that says um, stress relief, pick one that says breathing, pick one that says, um, you know, for sleep inducing and, and just get yourself to no matter what, when, when that anxiety hits you that you're, you're just wanting to have the carbs just say, you know what, no matter what, I'm going to go do a 10 minute guided meditation, breathe through it, listen, calm yourself, be grateful, start listing things you're grateful for. And um, just, it, it, it really can help your um, change your mindset. And I think meditation is um, overlooked. It's something that I'm trying to get a little bit more into myself. Just, just the, the whole th uh, thing with, with um, philosophy and, and being grateful and um, that there's, there's more to life than, than binging on sugar and carbs. Yes. Yeah, I think the breathing especially really helps, especially when your anxiety is really high, because you're probably in the fight or flight state. And so when you do these deep breaths, like the Wim Hof method, and I'll link to all of this in the notes, but when you breathe like that, it automatically will turn on the more parasympathetic rest state. And so you can kind of switch your body's mode. So like, that's really helpful. For me, sometimes like the meditation right after like I'm feeling that very high anxiety doesn't work because I can't calm myself down. So I personally have like, ran down the street or I like just scream, right? Just something to release all that. Maybe it's like adrenaline, maybe it's right. whatever it is. Um, sometimes just like dancing to really loud music, like just something kind of crazy to like release all that like energy in me. Right. So um, that's helped. 
not always, but you know what I mean? Like it's yeah. also something. I do um, sometimes, I do sometimes love to, um, I, I have a, a great speaker system here in my condo. I sometimes I'd love to just put on a favorite song mm. and blast it and then yes. just put myself in music and that can help. And, and similar to that is I love putting the, the, the AirPods on their earbuds and, and go out either with um, music or um, listening to a, a podcast. Yes, being with your tribe is so helpful. So um, where can people find you with, and your coaching? Like, how do they get to work with you? Um, well, the easiest way to get in touch with me is on Instagram, Carnivore Doctor. Um, I, I'm also on Facebook as Carnivore Doctor. Uh, I'm not as active on that, but everything I paste on is, uh, post on Instagram, I, I try to um, do a dual post there for people who are just Facebook people, but yes. um, Instagram's actually the, the easiest way. Um, and I did just start a YouTube channel, Carnivore Doctor, and I've just been trying to um, make some videos uh, for cooking. And I actually just did, I, I haven't um, edited it yet to put it up, but a what I eat um, in a week. Um, it's, mm -hmm. it's meant, I want to do for the whole month, but it ends up, um, a little bit lengthy, so I might do part one through four, but so many people ask me like, well, give me an idea of what you eat and how much you eat and when you eat. So I, I you know, and this, again, I tell people I'm, you know, I'm five foot three, 120 pounds. So this is for, for me and everybody's different. So I hate to do that. But, um, I also understand that when I started out doing this, I would have loved to have watched that video just to see, yeah. different cooking ideas, different techniques, different types of meat, different, you know, I was like, wow, I never would have thought to make shrimp as a side dish to my steak or, and make it with that, you know, garlic butter, Parmesan sauce, or it's just kind of fun. And, um, so I'm, I'm doing that and, um, posting some interviews. And, um, so, but I guess the, to answer your question, I'm, I'm going to tell, tell you the probably the direct message DM over on Instagram is the best way to reach me. Okay. Yes. And your videos, your cooking videos and kind of like planning ahead meals and even your exercise clips lately have been really helpful. And I know you do a lot of lives on Instagram where you answer people's questions and those have been really helpful too. So um, yeah, that's a good point because I do usually, and I actually just did, um, was it, I guess, Last night, uh, I put on my stories on Instagram a spot where right, type a question, and I already have about 10 questions written oh, down. Yes. So I usually like to go for a walk out on the beach here and um, answer the questions. And it's a great way for people to just sort of be together and, um, you know, listen to what other people are asking and what my answers are to them. And uh, I do try to do that at least two or three times a week. That's good. I think you're, um, you know, you are a breath of fresh air in the carnivore space. You're not dogmatic in you have to eat all this organ meat, you have to eat this certain amount, you're just open. And I think that's such a beauty of you. And so I think people will, you know, find a lot of benefits in following you. Yeah, thank you. And you know what, I, I, I really don't like to, uh, again, it's the it's the dogma of nose to tail. I mean, I have not eaten organs in 11 years of doing this. Um, but again, I'm open-minded and, you know, I'm thinking, what the heck, you know, let's just see if there is something to um, eating liver every once in a while. I haven't bought it yet, but. <laughs> I saw that you bought some organ meat though the other day, right? I think you were with well, your cousin. I'm visiting my cousin and she has this specialty butcher she went to before I flew out there and got tongue. Yeah. And, and then we bought heart and made heart. And I'm trying to think of what else. Yeah, those made. are all organ meats. I mean, they're yeah. all organ meats. Yeah. So that was interesting. And I have not had it since. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think heart taste, um, I think the nutrients in heart is more like muscle meat anyway. So, I mean, if you yeah. like your ribeye, do the ribeye. Yeah. And you know what? Uh, I've heard that if you make tongue like in the slow cooker, it can be really amazing. And yeah. so whatever the, this particular tongue was just like a from like a, a specialty German butcher or Polish butcher or something like that. It was sliced and, um, oh, but okay. yeah, but I have heard, you know, so again, I have an open mind. I, I haven't ventured out to buy a big tongue <laughs> and make it yet, but I have so many, I have so many really, really um, good 
things that I cooked at the beginning of carnivore that are I'm excited to make again to share with people. Um, and, and I really just don't make them much because life just got so easy, just kind of making my ground beef and my New York strips and my ribeyes. And every once in a while I'll do a, a whole, you know, big air fryer full of chicken wings and I kind of just change it up and I get into this easy pattern where it's just so simple. Mm -hmm. um, but I know what it's like, you know, having a family. And I, I just the other day um, recorded um, zero car pizza and it, it, it tastes really pretty darn good. And I think there's just, it's great to have alternatives and especially for people who like recipes and like to cook and they miss that. They feel like, Oh, you know, now I'm resigned to just grilling burgers and steaks, but it's not that way at all. Yes, I agree. I think over time you just kind of get into a rhythm because I'm the same way as you. I think I eat pretty boring. That's why I barely ever post. Maybe in my stories I'll share what I eat. But in general, it's like the same thing over and over. And so I don't really share as much. Um, so I totally get that. But in the beginning, I shared a lot because I tried all these different recipes. But I think as you do carnivore longer, you just like you said, you, you know, you get that zero carbs and you become a lot more even keel in your emotions. And also you, um, you know, your eating becomes really simple because you just get into a rhythm. It's just nourishment. And then you move on with your day. And yeah. I think that is some of the really big beauties of the carnivore diet. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, and it, it can be um, different and exciting too, if you want to make it like, you yes, know, yes. all of a sudden somebody posts something about oxtails and I'm like, wow, let's, let's try oxtails. You know, um, I am going to get a, a smoker because I used to do that with briskets and, and ribs and it was yeah. really good. So um, I'm going to get back into that and start posting some of that because it, it's fun. You know, it can be fun. And that, Oh, that's the other thing that I'll just say quick is that people people make this comment like, don't you get bored of meat? Yeah. What should I do when I'm bored of meat? I'm like, really? I mean, between bacon and pork belly and kielbasa and New York strip and beef ribs and, you know, all of these, these, the, the variety of what you can choose from and shrimp and scallops and, and mm -hmm. fish, and you know, whatever it is, it's like having optimal health and, and feeling fit and being fit um, there, there's no doubt in my mind that I couldn't even imagine saying I'm bored of me. Cause to me, that's just an excuse to say, you know what, this is just too boring for me. I better go back to my little buddy. <laughs> Mr. Yeah. Potter. I always say that the minute you start having doubts about the diet, that's when the ability or like the likelihood of you getting off the diet happens very quickly. And so that's why I'd rather people come into the carnivore diet, like more realistically than thinking it's a magic peel pill that heals everything and that you will be really thin. And so I think when you come with a more, it's a healing diet, I can get my life back. And, and then you, maybe I have to, you have to be patient. Yes. 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 Yeah. Well, thank you so much for your time, Lisa. I will share this. I'll put all your notes and then, um, yeah, I will talk to you soon. Thank you very much. A, pleasure. a, a true pleasure, Judy. It's good talking to you again. Take care. Bye. Bye.